Hi, I'm Joe James, and this is a two-part series on probabilities. In this series, we're going to learn how to solve coin toss problems, rolling dice problems, picking colored socks out of a drawer problems, picking colored marbles out of a bag problems, and several more types. In part one of this series, I'm going to teach you what is a probability and how do we calculate simple probabilities. In part two, we're going to do some more challenging word problems, typical of what you might see on the SAT or the ACT. So let's dig into part one. Finding probability is very simple. It is the number of winning outcomes divided by the number of total outcomes. And you'll see exactly what I mean as we walk through some problems. So when we flip a coin, a coin has two sides. Therefore, there are two possible outcomes. So the denominator here, the number of total outcomes, will always be two for a coin. It could either be heads or tails. Those are the two outcomes. But when you flip a coin, you have to either call heads or tails. So the probability of flipping a heads is one half. So where does that numerator come from? The number of winning outcomes is one because there's only one side of the coin that has a head on it. So one half number of winning outcomes because there's one head and number of total outcomes because there are two sides on the coin. So we can write that as one half or we could also write it as a decimal. 0 0.5 is the decimal equivalent of one half. Or you can also write this as a percentage. 50 percent. 50 percent chance of flipping a heads. When you express it as a percentage it's going to be between 0 and 100. A probability can never be less than zero, and it can never be greater than 100. If 100%, then it's guaranteed to happen. It's 100% certain. And if it's 0%, then there's no chance whatsoever of it happening. So there can never be a less than zero or greater than 100% chance of something happening. And same with the decimal. It can range between 0, 0.0 and 1.0. A decimal can never be greater than 1. And then the fraction is going to range from 0 to 1 also. We're never going to have a negative fraction, and we're never going to have a greater than 1 fraction. So 50% equals 0 0.5 equals 1 half. So here we're going to roll a six-sided dice. What is the probability of rolling a 3? Well, the probability of rolling a 3 is the number of winning outcomes divided by the number of total outcomes. Since this is a six-sided dice, there are six possible outcomes, right? One, two, three, four, five, or six could come up. But there is only one three on the die. So since we have one winning outcome, one three, and we have six possible outcomes, the probability of rolling a three is one-sixth. And that is equivalent to 16.67%. Just divide this out. So the probability of rolling a 9 on a 6-sided die. Well, again, there are 6 possible outcomes on the die, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. How many 9s are on the die? 0. So the probability of rolling a 9 is 0 over 6, or just 0. What is the probability of rolling an odd number? Well, this is a little more interesting here, isn't it? How many odds are there on the dice? Well, let's see. There's 1, 3 and 5 are all odd. 2, 4, and 6 are even. So let me see, how many winning outcomes are there? Number of winning outcomes, let's see, there's these three. That makes uh, three possible winning outcomes. So the number of winning outcomes is three. Number of total possible outcomes is six. So the probability of rolling an odd is 3 sixths. And we can reduce that to 1 half, or 50 percent. And incidentally, it's exactly the same probability as the probability of rolling an even. As you can see here, 2, 4, and 6 are all even. There are three winning outcomes. So the probability of rolling an, an even number on the dice, a single die, is also 3 out of 6, or 1 half, or 50 percent. What if we roll two dice? Find the probability of rolling at least one three. 
So to be clear here, we're not talking about the sum of the dice. We're talking about the face value of each dice separately. So if either one of these two dice comes up with a 3 on it, that is a winning possibility, regardless of what the other dice is. So a 3 and a 2 would be a winning combination. A 3 and a 6 would be a winning combination. We don't care about the sum of the dice. Don't be confused here about the sum. So let's write out the winning possibilities here. Well, let's see. The first dice, let's call this dice 1, and this dice 2. The winning possibilities are dice 1 is 3, and dice 2 could be 1. So there are six possible winning combinations, but there are some more. Let's write the rest of them out. Dice 1, dice 2. So that covers all the ones where dice 1 comes up as 3. What if dice 2 comes up as 3, and dice 1 comes up as 1? Or dice 2 comes up as 3, dice 1 comes up as 2. Uh, let's see, uh, dice 3 comes up as 3, dice 1 comes up as 3. We already covered that here, didn't we? Dice 2 comes up as 3, dice 1 comes up as 4 is a winning possibility, because there's at least one 3. Um, 3 and 5 is also a winning possibility, and 3 and 6. So how many winning possibilities here? You see, we have all these ones where dice 1 is a 3. There's six possibilities because there's six different outcomes for dice 2. And then there are five additional ones here because we had to cancel out this duplicate that we would have gotten if we put 3-3 three, three again. So there are actually 11 winning outcomes. The probability is 11 winning outcomes divided by what are the total number of outcomes. Well, we find the total number of outcomes, since there are six-sided dice and there are two of them. Let's see, we take six to the power two. So that gives us 36 total outcomes. Six to the power two equals 36, so we're going to put that 36 right here. Total possible outcomes. So again, that's with uh, different possible outcomes for both die 1 and die 2, two distinct pairs of outcomes. So just to walk through those, dice 1 could be 1, and then dice 2 could be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. Dice 1 could be 2, and then there are six possible outcomes for dice 2. So for each outcome of dice 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6, there are six possible outcomes of dice 2. That's why we're taking 6 times 6, equals 36 for the total number of possible outcomes. So this is the probability of rolling at least one three on a pair of dice. What is the probability of rolling a sum of eight with two dice? Now we only care about the sum of the two dice. So let's consider what are the different possibilities that would give us a sum of eight. Look, we have here four and two, that adds up to six. What are the different ways to get to 8? Let's see, 7 and 1. No, there's no 7 on the dice, right? So uh, 6 and 2 would give us an 8. Um, 5 and 3 would give us an 8. 4 and 4 would give us an 8. 3 and 5 would give us an 8. And 2 and 6 would give us an 8 where this is dice 1 and this is dice 2. So we see that you have 2 and 6 listed twice, but that's because in one case dice 1 is a 6 and dice 2 is a 2, and in the other case dice 1 is a 2 and dice 2 is a 6. So there are five winning outcomes over 36 total possible outcomes. So the probability of rolling a sum of 8 is 5 over 36. Here's a sock picking problem. Coin flipping, dice, marbles, and socks are the typical problems you see in probabilities. So this one is a drawer of socks. Okay, so in a drawer of five red socks and three blue, what's the probability of picking a blue one? Well, there are three blue socks, so 
number of winning outcomes is three, right? There are three different choices that would give us a blue sock, which is what we're looking for. So three winning outcomes divided by the total possible outcomes. Well, there are a total of eight socks in the drawer, right? So five plus three is eight. Eight total socks in the drawer. So the probability of picking a blue sock is three-eighths. Three blue socks out of a total of eight socks. Now if we're talking about the probability of two different events, two independent events, x and y both happening, then what we do is multiply the probability of x happening times the probability of y happening. Here we're, our, we're on the same sock problem where we have a drawer of five red socks and three blue socks. What is the probability of picking two blue socks in a row? Well, we know what the probability of picking one blue sock is, isn't it? Uh, let's see, the probability of picking one blue is equal to three blue socks, right? That's the winning outcomes because there are three blue socks in the drawer divided by eight total socks in the drawer. And the probability of picking a second blue sock, this is on the second pick, a blue sock, is, let's see, how many blue socks are left in the drawer now? We picked one of them out, right? If, if we had a successful blue pick in the first draw, then there are only two blue socks left, aren't there? because we picked one of those three already. So now there are only two blue socks left. So the probability in our second pick of picking a blue one is two, because there are two possible winning outcomes, only two blue socks left, divided by how many socks left are there? Well, there are not eight socks left in the drawer anymore, are there? There are now seven left, five red and two blue. So this is going to be seven possible outcomes two winning outcomes because there are only two blue socks left, seven possible outcomes because there are now only seven socks left in the drawer after we picked out that one blue sock. So now we need to multiply these together. As you recall, we just showed that we're going to multiply those two probabilities together when we're talking about the combination of x and y happening. This is x, this is y. These are two separate events. So the probability of both of these events happening is equal to the probability of this event happening times the probability of this event happening. So probability of blue and blue is equal to 3 eighths times 2 sevenths. And that is equal to, let's see, we just multiply the numerators, we get 6 divided by multiply the denominators, we get 56. 6 over 56. Uh, both of these are divisible by 2, aren't they? Um, so 3 over 28. And that's our answer. 3 over 28 is the probability of picking two blue socks in a row. So now let's figure out what is the probability of tossing three tails in a row and we're just flipping a coin. Well, we know that there are two possible outcomes when we flip a coin. So let's look at a single toss. The possibility of a single tail is one out of two, right? Because there's one tail on the coin and there are two sides on the coin, two possible outcomes on your toss. So that's uh, the probability of flipping a single tails is one half. And the probability of flipping another tail is also one half. And the probability on the third toss of flipping a tail is one half. So what do we do when we have three separate events? Well, we multiply them. So the probability of x and y, and in this case, x and y and z, is the product of those three probabilities. The probability of tail, 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 is equal to one half times one half times one half. So the first half represents the first toss, the probability of being a tail. The second half is the second toss. We have a one half chance of 
flipping a tail, and in the third toss, we have a one-half chance of flipping a tail. So the probability of three tails in a row is one-half times one-half times one-half. And that is equal to, let's see, one times one times one on the numerators gives us one, and the denominators is two times two times two. That's four times two, that's eight, right? So one-eighth. And if we wanted to convert that to a percent, we would get 12.5%. So again, we simply multiply the probability of each event to get the probability of all three events happening. So if we were to flip a coin 15 times, the probability of 15 consecutive heads, well, it'd be very small, but the probability of one head is one half. So here we would just have, we have 15 separate events, we would just take one half, raise it to the 15 power, just like we did on the previous one. We took one half to the third power, which is one half times one half times one half, right? One half times itself three times. In this case, we would just multiply one half times itself 15 times to get the probability of 15 consecutive heads. And it's going to be a very small number indeed. But that's how we get it. We simply raise one half to the 15 power. I hope this video was helpful for you. If so, please click the like button and subscribe to my channel. I'm Joe James. Thanks for watching.